And so to the main event. The leader of the Labour Party, a man who believes he may be your Prime Minister really very soon, Jeremy Corbyn. Just before we came on air, I asked him what should happen next after the Salzburg summit. The Prime Minister should report to Parliament on what has happened, what her statement really means, and we should then measure her proposals for the relationship with the EU against the six tests that the Labour Party has put down. And we will then challenge the government on the need for a trade relationship with Europe which protects the freedom of movement of the Irish border, a customs union with Europe and also protection of all the conditions that are so important such as workers' rights and environmental protections. Are we close to a general election, do you think? Well, we could be because uh, this government doesn't seem very strong. It is looking in two directions at the same time. On the one hand, a trade deal with the USA, and the other hand, some kind of relationship with Europe. And uh, we could well be looking towards a general election. And do you know what? We're ready for it. How do you get to that general election, which clearly you want, because you have to persuade Tory MPs to vote for something which could lead to Jeremy Corbyn and becoming Prime Minister, which may not be very likely. <clears throat> well, I don't think there's many Tory MPs want a Labour government, but there's many Tory MPs that are very, very angry at the way their government is performing and might feel that uh, it is the right time for the country to make a decision on the future. And so we will be putting our case to Parliament and we will see what happens after that. But we're absolutely ready for it. Listen. People voted in two ways in the referendum, obviously, but nobody voted to lose their job. Nobody voted to see factories closed. Nobody voted to see trade ending with Europe. So we could, we're in uncharted waters. We could very well have an election. You could be Prime Minister really quite soon, possibly even before Christmas. And in those circumstances, it'll be Jeremy Corbyn leading the negotiations with the rest of the EU. Time is running out. Time is now very, very short. And there are two really big problems. So you've said just as now you don't want a border in Ireland or between Ireland and the rest of the UK. How do you resolve that? Well, you have to resolve it by, as I said, the trade agreement with Europe, but also with a customs union with Europe, so that there would not be, but, uh, there would be then tariff free trade and um, obviously um, no trade border because if you, look, you, you know the area as well as I do. Well, it's the, ridiculous. The EU have been absolutely crystal clear that a customs union does not resolve the Irish border question. Well, I think we can reach an agreement that would ensure there is a freedom of trade across the Irish border and across the Irish Sea, but that means there, there, has, no to be, that there has to be a trade agreement with Europe in order to achieve that. And that's the case that Keir Starmer and I have put, and we will continue to put, and we will continue to negotiate if we're in government on that point. At the moment, we can only make our views known and obviously hold our government to account. But it doesn't sound as if you have a new or different idea about how to resolve the Irish border question, which is what this is all breaking down over. It, Europe is very clear, the EU uh, is very clear that they do not want to see an unravelling of the Belfast Agreement to the, or the whole Irish peace process and they see the imposition of a border as part of that unravelling and they're right about that. I think we can get an agreement which would ensure you do not have that hard financial okay. border. But we have to take that on trust. Let me ask about the trade side because the other thing the EU hate is this notion of cherry picking. And looking at what you propose, you propose cherry picking just as much as Theresa May does. You want uh, all the, the benefits of, of the single market and free trade and all the rest of it, but you don't want to accept some of the limitations, notably the state aid rules, the procurement rules, and you want to be able to set uh, new trade deals around the world. That is exactly what the Tories want, and that is exactly why well, these proposals are breaking down. There's quite a big difference between us and what um, Liam Fox is trying to do. He wants to do a trade deal with the United States and with lots of other countries, all of which involve the reduction of environment and other standards, all of which involve deregulation. Ours is the exact, exact opposite. We want stronger regulation but you also on want workers' to rights at both ends of it. And we would want to have, obviously, a say in how we deal with trade arrangements in the future. But ours is not undermining quite the opposite. Ours is actually strengthening consumer and workers' environmental rights. If the, the price for getting a good trade agreement which preserved British jobs was some kind of checks on the Irish Sea, would you accept that? I think it would be very hard to see how you should have checks on, on the Irish Sea because that, in effect, brings back the question of the Irish border. I still don't understand how, wh what your ideas are for resolving the Ompas we're now in. An agreement with Europe which gives us trade and gives us a 
customs arrangement with the European Union That's to prevent what that kind of thing. as well. And she got into these two troubles, yes, the Irish like, border and oh. cherry picking, and you're in the same position. No, no, she's looking two ways at the same time. Liam Fox is going off trying to do sweetheart deals with one country or another, all of which involve, as I said, undermining and deregulation. Ours is not undermining and deregulation. We want stronger yeah. regulation at both ends of any trade agreement. And what you also want as a movement and as a party is a second referendum or the so-called people's vote. 87% of your own supporters and your own members want that now. They're all coming to this conference asking for it. There's lots of signs that if you say, do you know what, I've looked at this and in the new circumstances that we're in today, I can see the case for a second referendum. That would be your route to number 10. We're having a debate at our conference and we will come to a conclusion on that. Our preference is that we will demand our six tests against the government and our preference would be for a general election and we can then negotiate our future relationships with Europe. But let's see what comes out of conference. We're a democratic party, we're very big, it's the biggest conference we've ever had. And given that, do you feel bound by what the conference decides well, as the leader? Obviously, I'm, I'm there elected uh, as a leader of this party, elected as the leader in order to bring greater democracy to this party and that's exactly what I've been doing for the past three years. And will this party get a chance this week to vote on the issue of a second referendum, clearly? There will be a clear votes in conference. I don't know what's going to come out of the, all the compositing meetings that are going on. And if, as a result of that clear vote, the conference says, yes, we want a second referendum, will Jeremy Corbyn Look, deliver that? Let's see what comes out of conference, and then obviously I'm bound by the democracy of our party. But you'd be... A, if, if, there was a, if there was another referendum now, with one option being, broadly speaking, stay in the EU, and the other being, broadly speaking, leave the EU, how would you vote? Well, that's conjecture as to what the question would be. Well, I've just given you the that's, question. That's, that, in or that, out? That's, that's conjecture. We don't know what it will be. In the referendum, I wanted to remain and reform the EU. 40% of Labour voters voted to leave, 60% voted to remain. But do you know what? None of them voted to lose their job. None of them voted to have lower food standards. They all wanted a better economic performance in this country. The, the cry of many areas that voted leave was they're fed up with the way they're being treated by governments in this okay. country. You, you, you've discussed no deal a couple of times now. In the real world, Theresa May is going to carry on negotiating at some point this autumn. She's probably going to bring some kind of deal back to the House of Commons. It's probably not going to meet your six tests. But in those circumstances, now we know what no deal might look like. Would you really vote it down and plunge us towards no deal? We would vote it down if it didn't meet our tests in order to send the government, if it's still in office, straight back to the negotiating table. And if there's a general election and we're in office, we would go straight to the negotiating table. Because we want to protect jobs and industries in this country. We want to ensure there is a good, effective trade relationship with Europe in the future.